So in this video, I figured I'd do a rendering in pen and ink using a fountain pen. Um, this is a, a Lamy, I think this is an extra fine point. Um, as I said, fountain pens are just like dip pens, but they're pretty much just with a self-contained reservoir of ink, so you don't have to dip it each time. Um, some come with a replaceable nib. Actually, I think you can replace this nib as well. Um, and this is a f extra fine point. Actually, if you look, I'm not sure you can see it, but there's an EF on the nib. Um, and also, you can replace these. So if you um, choose to have different size nibs, you can get another one. Like, uh, I have a um, broad and a medium tip, but I like using the extra fine. The thing is, that's cool, is that, as I said, you can create these lines of varying weight. So it varies in thickness. See that? Takes some getting used to. So say, for example, like I have a... Uh, a form like that. Two ways I'm going to show you what I'm going to apply here. So you have a rounded form like that and let's say you have two forms next to each other like let's say we have two cylinders like this. Alright so basically it's like you have they're adjoining. It goes like that and like that. So how the um, Right, so how these uh, pens are generally used is that you kind of have the line vary in thickness as it comes over, like so. See that? So it's almost as if I'm imagining that light is coming from this side, right? And over here is in shadow, so. The line will be bold, gets thin as it goes to the light. Bold, thin as it goes to the light. Like so. And in here, you can choose to do it this way. Or you can even do a little technique that you, you have the, you know, like the line of balance. Like this. Like that. So it's kind of like creating this bridge between the two forms and this is a kind of approach you see a lot in ink drawings where uh, you can use a little line like this to kind of like bridge two forms that are merged together See, and then you can even have another line that goes across like this. See, but the trick is to have the lines seem to complement each other in terms of how they're flowing. Even if they go in the opposite direction, it works pretty much the same. And that's a cool effect of pens that use nibs like this. So it's good to practice if you get a pen like this or even a simple dip pen, you know, like one of these. Um, it's good practice just to try to vary the lines. Create a series of lines like this. See, I'm going from thin, thick, thin. Thin, thick, thin. Thin, thick, thin. And I'm varying this by varying the pressure on the pen. Little pressure, more pressure, less pressure. Or I can go heavy pressure to thin, heavy pressure to little. See, thick to thin. Just like that. It's good to practice these lines. You 
This is something I generally do to practice that. Thick, thin, thick, thin. All right, so um, let's see if we can have some fun with this. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Um, it was really a good exercise. It really shows you how to, you know, use the fountain pen to get a different line weight and really try to have them assimilate into each other. Because you'll notice that in certain areas, um, the line at the front, actually, you can see how it continues to the other side of the arm. So it's, it's good to feel as if the line is being continued all the way to the other side, even though it doesn't connect you know visually kind of like make that trail and it's, it's a really cool experience so you see I, it, by varying the weight of the line it helps to convey volume and and mass without even necessarily thinking of a, con a consistent you know light source um, because you can't really tell where the light source is with this but um, it's more about sculpting the volumes so basically as you go from the edge to over the form the line weight decreases or it gets thinner and then it gets it thickens or widens again as it goes to the edge and that's pretty much the 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 same consistency or the same pattern that i repeat throughout the entire drawing just varying the line according to the volume that i feel so i'm imagining a cross contour you know i'm seeing or feeling the the trail that's going over this all right, so for each of the forms, I'm feeling the line that goes over. And once you have a particular volume, once you have a volume like this, right, you can describe it, you can use cross contour lines in a, in a variety of directions to describe it. You can use lines like this. So it can go thin, thick, thin, 
thin, thick, thin. So these are more like longitudinal lines. Or you can use lines that go across. So thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Or you can go the opposite direction. Thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, and so on. Or you can even use lines of the same direction but with a different angle. So it's like this. And then have lines like this. See, but notice that they all describe the volume effectively, okay? You're still feeling the volume as it moves across. And that's a key thing that you want to keep in mind is that whatever line you're using, it's describing the volume. It's, you're feeling the volume. So you have to imagine that shape or that form as three-dimensional for it to work, okay? Um, you have to imagine that it is, this is actually a three-dimensional form and you're going over it. Imagine this is an egg and you're, you're following it. And another thing that's important that I, I maybe should mention is that notice that I space the lines evenly throughout. You know, it creates a sense of consistency and make the, the drawing overall has a sense of uniform, uniformity, okay? Because the lines should be evenly spaced. Whenever you have lines like this, you know, there's a sense of discontinuity between those lines. It doesn't feel like it's, it seems as if they're individually describing something else, okay? So by having the lines be evenly spaced, they're grouped. The mind perceives them as being grouped, as in other words, that they're doing the same thing. Here, you know, it's almost like you're describing texture or something, you know, this group of line may be doing something else or stand for something else and so on. So by having all the lines be evenly spaced, it helps to bring about a certain level of consistency in the drawing. So that that is something that also takes practice. But it's it's fun. And as I said, you know, practice things like this. Bold light. Bold light. Bold light. Bold light. Bold light, bold light, you know. All right, so hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this and uh, you can apply it to your own drawings.